believe this is your blessed day. Yes, why not? You say, well, if you knew all the problems I was facing, I know you probably have plenty of problems. Everybody does. But God wants to bless you today. The scripture says that. Do you know what he says? Surely blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply you. You say, where is that in the Bible? That's Hebrews 6, 11. And that was also a promise to Abraham. You're a born again Christian? Hey, you're Abraham's seed. That's a confirmation that this is your blessed day. Surely blessing he will bless you. Surely multiplying he will multiply you. And I think God has something. I don't just think it. I know God has something so special just for you today. So watch carefully and have an open heart. You know, have an open mind. Don't reason away what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you today. Now, I'm sitting here and you say, you're dressed a little differently. I am. And let me tell you what it is. This is a Pakistani dress. And when I go there, and I've been there six times, you know, more, and I wear what they wear. And it's not a crisis. I love wearing what they wear. But you know how this started? This basically started way back when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I've called you to cover the earth with the word. And at that time, I said, okay, Lord, I'll make a vow that if you open the doors, you provide the finances, I will do what you want me to do. Now, that was at 42. <clears throat> now, I'm 85. And that vow is being fulfilled in miraculous ways in my life. So I wanted to wear some miracle clothing to show you that God has a miracle for your life in making a vow. Now, you say, well, I don't know what that is. So I'm going to tell you about Hannah. You remember Hannah in the Bible? She wanted to have a child. And her husband had another wife named Penina. And Penina had all the children. But Hannah was barren. But he loved Hannah. He really loved her. And so he said to me, uh, to her, this is not a problem. You know, I love you. You don't have to have children to make me love you. But she wanted a child. So, you know, the Jewish people would go at certain times of the year and they would worship God and renew their faith in God. And so she is praying in front of this priest named Eli and he thinks she's drunk. Now, you know, you could be very offended by that. But folks, I'm going to tell you something. Don't be led by your offense. You need your miracle more than your offense. She could have said, well, you old man, you think I'm drunk? I'm going to walk out of here. But she wanted a child. And she said, no, I'm not drunk. I just want a child. And she said, if God, and she made a vow. Oh, she said, if God will give me a son, I will give him to God all the days of his life. She didn't have him yet. But she said, if I had one, this is what I would do. I'm going to make that as a vow. Well, we know what happened. She had a child, miraculously, and she had Samuel. So what did she do with Samuel? She took care of him till he was of an age that she could take him to the priesthood, vowing before you have it. And I opened the program telling you that, that, you know, I vowed, I would do what God asked me to do, but, you know, I didn't have any means or any way. It was just totally, <laughs> if you had looked at it then, you would have said, oh, dear, you know, this crazy woman vowing she's going to cover the earth with a word. She's a real nut, and you can spell it with a capital N. But, folks, listen to me. I've been in 134 countries because of that vow. Now, you say, how can that work for me? And I want this to work for you. So I have a special, special booklet called Blessed to be a Blessing. And it's keys that I have used in my life with vows that have brought great provision from God. And all of you calling in and sending any gift, I want you to get this. 
And while you're on the phone, make it short. Say, I'm vowing and vow something special that if God will give you this, mm, you will give it back to him in a special way. I'm telling you, I know how it works. So have you called in yet? And, you know, get prayer. We'll pray with you that God brings in the provision of that. So don't put it off. Do it right now. You know, we love to pray with you. We consider it an honor. When people ask me to pray with them, I consider that an honor. But I want to go a little further about Samuel. When Samuel reached a certain age, she took him to Eli. Now, Eli was not a real good priest. You know, for one thing, he misunderstood her, but she needed her miracle more than her offense. And I'm saying that to some of you. You need your miracle more than the offense of what you're carrying around. Oh, 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 I read your mail, didn't I? <laughs> anyway, so she takes him to Eli. Well, Eli... He has two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and they are the pits. And they're sleeping around with the women. They're priests. They're sleeping around with the women. They're stealing from the sacrifices. They are just thugs. You can say yuck twice. Yuck, yuck. One yuck for each son. And so this is the example that Samuel has. But Samuel is a vow child. Mm. He's a miracle child. And the Bible says to us about Samuel, he grew in wisdom and favor with God and man. Now, I looked at that and I thought, how could he grow in wisdom and favor with such a mess of environment around him? And I want to tell you, he submitted to Eli. He submitted to his leadership. He didn't compromise it. And one night, he had a dream and God spoke to him and told him what was going to happen to Eli and his sons. And Eli knew that Samuel had heard the voice of God because Samuel kept asking Eli, did you call me? I heard this voice, Samuel, Samuel. Eli said, no, go back to sleep. And then it happened the second time and the third time. And he said, Eli had enough sense to say this, say, speak, Lord, your servant is hearing. And that's when he told him the history of Eli and his sons. Now, did Samuel say, that's that. I'm going back to my mama. Don't know. He's a vile child. He's a miracle child. Mm. And he just stayed with him, grew in wisdom and favor with God and man. And look what was produced. We have two books in your Bible that are named after Samuel. Awesome. He's the one who anointed David to be the king. And God said his house would never end. Samuel, this is Samuel. And he is a foul child. Now, I want to encourage you. If God gave you $1,000, would you sow it to help me go to Pakistan or to Iran or Egypt? <laughs> Would you sow it to help me reach areas that are unreached? You say, yeah, I could do that if he gave it to me. <laughs> then I want you to call. Yeah, what's wrong with calling and saying, I'm going to make a vow. And if God will give me $1,000, I'll help Marilyn with her vow to cover the earth with the word. And then if you sow a seed right away, I tell you, I have something that will be a blessing to you. It's blessed to be a blessing. It has seven keys that I've used in my life that are just awesome. And so I encourage you, pick up the phone. Don't be afraid. You know, if Hannah had been afraid, she'd never had Samuel. If she hadn't had Samuel, would we not have David? I mean, how all these things knit and bond together. What is God knitting and bonding for you? So pick up the phone. Sow a seed, and how many of you? Well, if God, I don't have a thousand dollars, but if God would give it to me in a miraculous way, Meryl and I would help you. And you can say, Well, do you really go to those places? I take you with me on a lot of them. And you can go and see exactly what God does. So I know God has a special blessing to you. So when I look at Hannah, 
And I know something else about her. Every year, she would bring him a coat. So as he grew up, she said, here is here's the substance of my vow. And she would bring that little coat to him. And he is growing in wisdom and favor with God and man. So she has to make a bigger coat every year. And I thought, oh, Hannah, how sweet you are as a mother. How sweet you are as a believer. And <clears throat> listen, she had five more children. When she gave Samuel, God gave her a house full of kids. Yes, because there's an overflow in a vow. <laughs> there's an overflow. And you say, well, I don't know how that can work. That's why I want you to call in and sow a seed of any kind. And we'll pray with you about your vow. Yes, we will. And this is called blessed to be a blessing. And it will bless you. But I like this. You can pass it on. You know, books are missionaries. They work while you sleep. And so you can read it and then pass it on to someone else. But God is speaking to you in a very special way. You're not going to be offended because you are misunderstood in your vow. You're not going to give up on God. You're not going to be stupid in all this. You're going to be anointed of God and you're going to be wise in what he has for you. Now, listen to me. I'm going to be back with some more vows. Who else in the Bible made vows? You'll be surprised, quite a few. But I want to talk to you about Jacob. And you're going to love it. And I'm going to talk to you about making rash vows and foolish vows because we have truth and we also have deception. And you're not going to be deceived. You're going to walk in the wisdom of God. Be right back. Are you one of the many who has been taught that you can't be wealthy and spiritual at the same time? For years, many believers thought it was spiritual to be poor. Praise God for showing us that poverty has nothing to do with personal spirituality and holiness. For your gift of any amount, we will send you Marilyn's eye-opening booklet, Blessed to Be a Blessing. This dynamic booklet will show you how to make Jesus your source for all the good things in your life. For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you Marilyn and Sarah's two-CD set, Daring Faith. In this four-message teaching series, you'll be challenged and encouraged to live a life of daring faith, even when everything else points toward doubt. We will also send you Marilyn's CD teaching, The Power of the Seed. This teaching will help you plant, grow, and harvest the seeds in your life. Call or click today to receive this amazing resource. excited about what's happening by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. When I get involved in the Bible, I get involved in the miraculous. When you get involved in God's Word, it brings His provisions. And today, we're looking at vows and people who made vows, which means they don't have it. But they say, God, if you give it to me, I will give it to you. And you say, do you think that's really scriptural? Oh, yeah, the opening of the program. We talked about Hannah. But now I want to talk about Jacob. You know, Jacob did some stupid things. So did Esau. Jacob lied and deceived to get the blessing that was supposed to come on Esau. He wanted that blessing. And then Esau found out what he had done and said, man, I'm going to kill you. 
you stole my blessing. And Jacob fled and went back to the homeland of his mother. Now, this is a dark time for Jacob. His brother hates him. He's, of course, fallen out of favor with his father. His mother, who's, I think, an over-nurturing mother, you know, she sent him away, and he's alone. And he's a young man. And he lies down to take some sleep, and he has a dream. And if you remember the dream, it's a ladder with angels ascending and descending on it. And he, he says, I didn't know God was in this place. So he feels the presence of God and in the dream. And he said, God, if you'll take me back and you'll take care of me, I will tithe. I'll give you 10% of everything I have. Now you say, well, what did he have? Nothing. <laughs> That's a vow. You don't have it, but you make a commitment before you have it, then God can bring it. I really believe that vows have to do with faith. A lot of people are really afraid to make a vow, but it's a faith move. And God always honors faith. Well, you want to please God? Walk in faith. Now, let's see if God honored it. And so we watch Jacob and remember, man, Laban did some stupid things and Jacob fell in love with Rachel and <laughs> Laban substituted Leah. He didn't want Leah, but he gave him Leah. So he has to work 14 years to get Rachel. That doesn't look like your vow is very good. But in those 14 years, he's taking care of all the cattle for Laban. And he, he is being blessed and he is prospering and prospering. And I watch and I love to read the story about Jacob because he's so stupid like some of us can be. But he made a vow. And God honored the vow because he walked in faith. And he blessed him and multiplied him in the most unusual ways. And finally, God said, okay, it's time to go. You need to take your wives, your children, and go. Oh, no. Ooh, I have to meet Esau. If I go back, I have to meet Esau. And so he makes a decision, leaves Laban, takes all of them, and something so supernatural happens. And when he meets Esau, he brings a gift for him, and he and Esau have peace. And later we see them together. When the father dies, they are both at the funeral and helping with it. But Jacob became a blessing and a giver out of a vow. And God blessed him in so many ways. Now, have you ever made a vow? Have you ever said, okay, God, if you give me such and such, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. I want to encourage you to get a very special gift I have for you. Blessed to be a blessing. And it gives you seven keys. And I know how these keys work because I have made vows. And I know how God has brought things to me in the most unusual ways. Open doors to countries that hate women and love me. I love what this truth is. So everyone who sows a seed, I want you to call in right now and I want you to sow that seed, but I also want you to say what your vow is. Well, if God would give me this, I would tithe to my church. If God would give me a thousand dollars, I would give it to Marilyn to help her cover the earth with the word. You know, if God would give me a child, I'd give that child to God all the days of their life. That's what Hannah did. She got a miracle child. See, vows of faith can bring the miraculous. And we see how it works. So call in right now. want to hear from you. But I want to talk about some foolish vows. Because, folks, there's truth and there's deception. And you can have a right heart, but you could blow it. 
And so I want to talk to you about Jephthah. You say, who on earth is he? Don't even know how to spell it. Well, he's a person who was spirit-filled in the book of Judges. Very interesting. Five people filled with the Spirit in the book of Judges. All the charismatics aren't around today. They had them in the Old Testament too. And he was illegitimate. And so his brothers, by the natural wife, knocked him around, didn't like him. He was very rejected. But he loved God. And when he was thrown out of the house, he began to get an army together. And it said that he was filled with the Spirit. And so he said to God, you know, I love you more than anything else. I want to use my army for you. And there was an enemy that came against Israel in that time. And the only one that had a good army was Jephthah. So his brothers sent to him and said, oh, you know, we want you to bring the army. We want you to protect us. And Jephthah, the rejected one, said, well, if I win, will you make me a leader? Will you accept me? And then he got nervous about it. And he said, you know, God, if you just let me win, you know, I'll give you whatever I see first when I return from winning. Now, he didn't have to make that vow, but he did it. And when he returned from winning, the first thing that happened, his daughter rushed out to meet him. See, I think that could be a rash vow. And so what did he do? You say, well, did he kill her? No, no, no. It said she wanted to go on the mountains and cry about her virginity. And people would talk about that. It didn't say he killed her, but she would never marry. He dedicated her to God to be like in a full-time service type of thing. That's a rash vow. And so being filled with the Spirit helps us to make the right kind of vows. Just to say, whatever I see first, I'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that could be very dangerous, and it was. So I'm not just teaching you, you know, to make vows for vows sake, but I'm teaching you to be led of the Spirit and to see what God can do in your life through a vow. So I want you to call in and I want to hear from all of you what a vow is you're going to make to God. And all of you sowing a seed today, I want to send you the book, Blessed to be a Blessing. Why do I want you to have this? Because I believe that these seven keys will work for you in a very supernatural way. And I believe God is doing something very special in this program today. And my prayer for all of you is that you are led of the Spirit. When you make that vow, you are saying, okay, God, you do this and it's yours. Okay, God. And hearing from God, hearing from God, like Hannah, crying out to God. And remember with the vow, she not only got Samuel, she got the overflow. When you make a vow, I'm telling you, the overflow comes your way. Have you called yet? I want to hear from you. And we love to pray with you. And that's key because we want the Spirit of God to move on you. And we don't want you to be rash or foolish. We want you to hear from the Holy Spirit. We want the Word of God to manifest the goodness and power and provision. Are you one of the many who has been taught that you can't be wealthy and spiritual at the same time? For years, many believers thought it was spiritual to be poor. Praise God for showing us that poverty has nothing to do with personal spirituality and holiness. For your gift of any amount, we will send you Marilyn's eye-opening booklet, Blessed to Be a Blessing. This dynamic booklet will show you how to make Jesus your source for all the good things in your life. For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you Marilyn and Sarah's two CD set, Daring Faith. In this four message teaching series, you'll be challenged and encouraged to live a life of daring faith, even when everything else points toward doubt. We will also send you Marilyn's CD teaching, The Power of the Seed. 
This teaching will help you plant, grow, and harvest the seeds in your life. Call or click today to receive this amazing resource. such a privilege for us just to set this time aside, you and I, and just pray what God would want to speak to you today and what He could do in bringing the miraculous. And I'm sure you already have it if you're a Christian, but more. I need more miraculous, don't you? And I need to be led by the Spirit. So I'm going to pray for you, John 8:12. And I like what he said. I am the light of the world. Jesus said this. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So I'd like you to put your hand on the screen if you would. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person who wants to follow you and wants your light. And I pray that they will see that when we follow you, we see the light of life. We have light for this life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now call us because, you know, we'd like to pray with you about being led by the Spirit and the things that you have learned today about the vow. And I'd like to encourage you to call us again about blessed to be a blessing. And, you know, you just sow a seed and we want to send this to you. But remember, I'm sending a missionary to you because you can pass this on and people who would never listen to you will read the book. And it's small. So they say, wow, can God's promises work like that? Yes. So this is to help you stay in the faith of your vow, but it's also to give you a missionary in your hands to pass on to others and that we would be sensitive to listen to His voice and follow Him. 